Engagers, this is Professor Game, where we interview successful practitioners of games, gamification and game thinking, who bring us the best of their experiences to get ideas, insights and inspiration to help us in the process of using games and gamification in our daily lives, for example, to learn what we are teaching. And I am Rob Alvarez. I work at Ironhack, teach at IE Business School University and so much more and host this podcast. If you have an extra second, please go ahead and subscribe for free to our email list at professorgame.com slash subscribe. Engagers, welcome back to another episode of the Professor Game podcast. And we are with Tracy J today. But Tracy, before we kick off, are you prepared to engage? I am. (laughs) <laughs> Let's do this because we have today the creator of the Feed Your Ninjas movement. She is the author of How to Feed Your Ninjas children's book, and she's currently working on an idea for a video game app that helps you, well, you know, feed your ninjas. Having overcome an autoimmune disease, she's an advocate for being in control of your own personal health, and she hopes to inspire others to take charge of their health, but realize that it would be easier to start at the foundation, and that is children. So, you know, you'll see how we are going to be sort of weaving all these topics throughout our conversation. But before we kick off, before we start with the questions, is there anything we left out? Oh, uh, are you talking to me, Rob? Yes, of <laughs> course. <laughs> no, I am ready to embark on this and, and educate your listeners on what I have and tell them how I do it. That sounds great. So talking about how you do it and what you're doing, what would you say if I asked you, like, what is a typical day, a typical week? What does it feel like to be Tracy J nowadays? Well, Rob, I am focused on self-care. And my everyday is getting a workout in. My everyday is making sure that I feed my ninjas. And I love <laughs> to explain what that what that is, given a chance. That sounds absolutely great. And Talking about those things and talking about feeding your ninjas, I'm sure you've been doing this for a while and you've been, this movement that you're creating has had its ups and has had its downs as well. Talking about those things, we also like to kick off with a very deep question in that sense. And it's about one of those times when things just did not go your way. You know, you're either feeding your ninjas or or helping create that community. I don't know, whatever you were trying to do, and it just didn't go exactly your way. And we want to sort of be there at the ground level with you, see what lessons you took away from that, maybe what you would have done different now that you have this new information, however you want to approach this one. Oh, gosh. So yeah, it's been a journey. I'll tell you that. I guess starting out, I've, I've done a lot of things over my last several years, like 30 years, and always looking for that one thing that's going to be my purpose. And this one is, and it has been a challenge, let me say. There's many different avenues I've gone down. You just find out what's not working and you kind of regroup. Uh, you kind of never second guess, just kind of go, okay, this isn't working. And you go over to this avenue. And if certain things come your way and you explore them, like for instance, you reached out to me and this necessarily isn't my audience, but I just found that this is a really interesting situation and I'm going to seize the day. I'm going to take advantage of whatever comes my way. And I, I feel that there's purpose in that given the opportunity and you just take it and try it. That sounds fantastic. So what would you say, like, do you have a, a time, a specific moment where you said, oh my goodness, this is being so hard. I, I, I'm just not able to, you know, get out of this. And then eventually, of course you did. Like, you want to tell us a story around that? Because we want to, again, we want to be there with you and, and feel those those lessons coming to fruition. Okay, so yeah, this is a hard thing to do when you create something and you put yourself out there and you desperately want others to see your vision and you go down, you make several contacts, you reach out to numerous people, hundreds, hundreds of people, and it may not resonate until... If someone comes to you, I'm finding that that's what's happening right now. It's, I've reached out to so many people and you, you know, you're knocking on doors, you're asking, you're telling, you're, and really what happens is when they come to you. And this is the situation where I'm finding now I'm, I've have several other podcasts lined up because I have piqued an interest and I found the right person who sees my vision. And I think that's the key <laughs> is finding those that 
will see your vision. And then once one person does, I think that, that other people will kind of go, Oh, she, you know, this person did. And so that person will, and I don't know. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. It's, it's been very challenging. <laughs> and I want to say every day I want to quit every day. I want to just go, what am I doing? But this is put on my heart so uh, intently that I, I just want to keep on going. So. That is absolutely great. And can you tell us, like, because that, that's one of the things that we were sort of beating around, is what is this whole Feed Your Ninjas movement and, and how did you, how did it come about? Oh, um, okay. It's a very personal journey. And um, I think that a lot of purpose-driven missions come out of adversity. And mine was, I had a sibling that was diagnosed with cancer and was told that chemo was not going to be as effective on his type of cancer. And so I was intent on helping and fixing. So I went into this whole uh, researching the alternative cancer clinics. And I was fascinated that they all had the immunotherapy aspect to it. So I'm like, immunotherapy, what is, you know, we've heard of the immune, immune system. What, what is it? What, so I, I went researching and I became fascinated with what it is. It's just not this arbitrary word. It's these, these cells we are born with. They're innate cells. They're the natural killer cells. And these cells actually seek and destroy other antigens like viruses and precancerous cells. So when I read that, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is fascinating. So I wanted to find out more. I said, okay, <laughs> we have all these cells that are uh, these little armies, you know, with these armies are out there attacking the bad guys that come in. And, and I just wanted to know more. I wanted to know how do we keep these armies active and functioning? So I, that's, I researched more and I found out the answer. And the answer are those ninjas. <laughs> there are ninjas. And how do we, their ninjas are out there and they are armies and they are battling on the battlefield daily to keep us well. So any bad cells that come our way, they actually seek and destroy them. <laughs> that sounds absolutely fantastic, Tracy. And as you can tell, you know, there is a very playful aspect to this because, again, you know, it's geared towards children uh, and it, it, it is very playful. But as you've known from our previous episodes, Engagers, this is an, a, an approach. This is a way of being playful that works very well on children and can work very, very well on other audiences as well. And that's why we're diving sort of deep into this topic today. That's why we want to understand how this playfulness is involved in the Feed Your Ninjas movement. What is it? You know, how, how do you, what are the stories that you're kind of telling children to, to get through to this? And, and that's the, the, the next place I wanted to get to, Tracy. How do you, you know, how, how does this, how does this happen when you're, when you're telling this to children? What is the idea you want to get them through? Like, how does this whole thing work? Yeah, well, uh, they Children like to be entertained and they like play. And so when I created these ninjas running around in my mind, they're wielding bananas and asparagus as weapons. And I just thought, you know what, this would be a really fun children's book and a way to engage them into wanting to learn about health, you know, healthy choices. And so that's when I, I created the book and created these images of these ninjas and they're fighting off bad guys with their bananas and their asparagus. And at the end of, end of that, when their parents are helping reading through them and they're explaining to them, yes, this is what can keep us well if we make healthy choices. And what I did is at the end of the book, I incorporated an interactive activity so that they could use little stickers and show their parents what they just learned. And that's when I also incorporated the, the scavenger hunt. So children love to be like, entertained and, and learning. If learning is fun, they're going to engage. So that's when I also, like I said, incorporated the scavenger hunt. And the parents can then again use the stickers as like it's a game of hide and seek. Well, we're, we're getting rid of the hide. We're just seeking, you know? <laughs> so, and if you're engaging them, they're paying attention. And what I found is when I first did the ebook and I sent this out to, you know, 
the parents that have young children, they came back to me and said, Oh my goodness, this, these children, you know, they're, they're wanting to learn. They're wanting to pay attention to what's healthy. And then I've had a few parents say to me, actually, it's made me think, you know, after I read it to my child. So I just found a, a way of making a tangible imagery, if you will, as to what the immune system is and does and how to keep it well and healthy and functioning. And I just, made it fun and entertaining and it just seemed to seem to work <laughs> it seems like it is working indeed absolutely absolutely so that seems to be one of your your proud moments finishing that book i am sure was one of those proud moments for sure and again diving deeper into that like the book was that fun inspiration to entertain to play with kids why did you, like, how did that come to mind? Because you said, yeah, kids like to be entertained, but why use a scavenger hunt? How did you sort of come up with the scavenger hunt? Like, how did you come up with the concept of them being ninjas, for example? Like, I, I'd like to go a little bit deeper into that, if that's okay. Okay, yes. Um, so the ninjas, it, it's uh, sometimes things happen to us and we're not really conscious of it. And when I was reading, doing this research and I became fascinated with, okay, we have these armies inside of us that are keeping us well. I don't know why ninjas formed. Ninjas just formed in my head. I just, they just came to be. And it, it's not like, because I've been doing research, it's just, they appeared. And I just, felt compelled to bring it forward. And then when I actually had somebody send me an email saying, Hey, we can show you how to create an ebook. I never had an, any idea of writing a book. So when things present themselves, I think it's an opportunity to, like you say, dig deeper or actually pick up that stone, take a look underneath it and see if this is something that you're supposed to be doing. And the ninjas, they, they just happened to me. And, um, I just moved forward. It, it was serendipity. Not even a thought. It was serendipity. Well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is for sure. And Tracy, you've you've been you know you've been sort of introduced to this game world that we we've been talking about as well. And you're thinking now perhaps of an idea for some sort of a game as well to to accompany the movement to accompany maybe the book. Can you talk to us a little bit more about you know what's your idea? What are you thinking? If if there's anything that you can reveal, of course, before it goes live into the to the real world. Oh, of course, I, and I'm not afraid of that. Actually, I hope everyone <laughs> listens. I hope everyone listens and incorporates this because I want to help people. I want to help people. What will make them motivated to do the work? Do get up and move. Get up and exercise. And so, my thought with the app for children was to just kind of incorporate a fun little learning game and intermittently have a, uh, I guess, a clock that'll stop. You have to stop the game. You have to do jumping jacks or bear crawl across the room or anything <laughs> that just starts them kind of getting excited about, okay, well, I'm doing this game and it's just, I'm sitting, but okay, it's going to stop and it's going to make me do something. And I can't progress until I actually do this or perform this task. And so that's my idea for the app for children. But I hope those listeners out there will maybe think about incorporating it into video games. Because I know you guys sit for a long time, um, you're enthralled in this game. But wouldn't it be cool if you could have like a little ping and you got to, oh, I've got to get up and, you know, do something. That was just my thought. For, for the kids and my my app, I hope it's just going to be, it's going to be simple, but you guys listening out there, let's let's get everybody moving. That's my goal. <laughs> so you basically want to get people to be moving around. There's there's plenty of inspiration that you can find in the app world, in the game world. There's plenty of people doing interesting things. In fact, a past guest, of course, has nothing to do with your 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 theme, so to speak. But maybe it could be an inspiration as far as you know what they're doing and and some of the the ideas that they have. It's called zombies run. So th th that's the name of, of the app. The idea is that you put on your headphones when you're going to run and it goes, you know, through an interactive story and you hear the zombies coming after you and you have to run faster and so on. And you're scavenging all around the city. A nice thing and interesting thing is that you don't have to go to specific places because sometimes maybe the map tells you to go oh, into this dark alley. You don't want to go through, of course, but but it's rather about keeping running and, and, and so on. So it's, it's it could be an interesting example of physical activity. It's a past guest as well. Maybe you want to take a listen on that episode with Adrienne Hahn, H-O-N. So that was that was a pretty cool one as well. 
Oh, that sounds great. I'm glad that they're incorporating activity. It's it's literally focused. It's like the Nike run of, you know, somebody who's just into zombies. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so if you're into ninjas, maybe you're you're going to be looking at the ninjas app by Tracy in the future. Hopefully. Hopefully. So Tracy, you've you've been around for a while now in this interview. You've you've listened to some of the questions, had a little bit at least of, of the vibe that we have in the podcast, understood a little bit how this the audience is is looking towards is there anybody like the first person that comes to your mind that you say, oh, this person would be, I would be interested in listening to this person in an interview like this one on Professor Game? Well, the first person that comes to mind is Dr. Dispenza, but that's not nothing to do with gaming. He is just my <laughs> inspiration. So um, for listening to games, I think you would go to Adrian. What was his last name, Rob? Adrian Hahn, H-O-N. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize. I am not a gamer and I'm like, I'm just very appreciative that I was able to come out here and talk to your audience about my passions. Sounds great. But if you are thinking of developing something that even looks or feels like a video game, I would certainly recommend you to go and play at least a few games. It could be board games, card games, ideally as well, something that might look in the sense of what you're going to build as well to gather inspiration more than anything else. Right. that would definitely be a recommendation I've heard from many guests and I, that I give away myself, at least this time for free. <laughs> oh, okay. Good advice. If anyone has any suggestions where I should go, I'd appreciate you, you reaching out to me. Sounds absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And what would you say in the world of that you're, you're being at, this whole you know immune systems and teaching this to kids, what would you say is your superpower? That thing that you are passionate about, that you do great, or at least better than many, most other people? My superpower is to make others enthusiastic of what I am doing. And my superpower is doing that in the sense of that I have so much purpose in this mission that I intend to make it uh, something that's, ah, I hope that it goes global. I, I really feel that my superpower is going to be that I'm going to have an impact on children and our future, future health. That sounds absolutely great. And Let's let's dive a little bit further into that because I know, you know, we're not health experts here at all, but you know, our recommendations are certainly welcome, especially coming from the specialists. So what would you say is that like you want to impact people into doing something? What would you can you give us an a, a quick insight into what that something looks like? That something would be to um, or some things, I don't know. Some things, okay, well, like I said, I have all these, all my references are on my website. And I am here to be the voice and be the messenger as to how important our immune system is to our well-being. As in the past, it's been, you know, what, you know, our health, our diet, our exercise, blah, blah, blah. But to understand, I really, really want to have people understand what our immune system is and it does and how you can incorporate your own self-care. Find something you enjoy as an exercise because if you find something that you find fun or you enjoy, you're going to be successful in creating a daily routine of just even walking. Walking is, it's very helpful. Just move. That's what I really, really want to, um, my message to be is I want people to understand how important our immune system is and that we have control to a certain degree over our health moving forward. That sounds absolutely amazing. It sounds very, very impactful mission that you're, you're going out for. So thank you for sharing that with the engagers today. Before we take off, Tracy, can you tell us where we can find out more about the Feed Your Ninjas movement your book, wherever you want to lead us, any final piece of advice you want to leave the engagers with before we say that to, at least for now and for today, it's game over. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, to find all my references, everything's evidence-based. You can go to www.feedyourninjas.com. You can read all my references there. If you were wanting to download a fun activity, if you have young children or if you know anyone that has young children, I'm offering a, a free download activity. And you can go and find that at www.buycarry.org, which is B Y. K-A-R-R-I dot O-R-G. 
and you can click on a download for the ninja activity. If you are wanting to learn more or help me with my mission and wanted to read my book, you can try before you buy uh, the ebook. And then once you do that, if you want to purchase the book, you can get a discount for what you paid for your ebook towards your hardcover. And all of that would be helping me get my mission out there, helping me spread the word. And you can share my information with all your friends and family members. I'd really appreciate it. Just feed your ninjas, everyone. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Tracy, for joining us today in this adventure with the Engagers. However, however, at least for now and for today, it is time to say that it's game over. Hey, Engagers, thank you for listening to Professor Game Podcast, and I hope you enjoyed this interview with Tracy. And I'd like to know if you have any questions that you would like to ask other guests, future guests please go ahead and go to professorgame.com slash question and ask your question. And if it is selected, and I think I would rather say once it is selected, it will come up in a future episode and you will get answered live during an interview. And remember, before you go on to your next mission, before you click continue and go next on to your next mission, remember to subscribe or follow using your favorite podcast app. This is done absolutely for free so that you can listen to the next episode of Professor Game. See you there.